Hi everyone, it's Raymond Wood from the Raymond Wood Podcast. Now this is episode number four and I am so excited to introduce this guest. This is a guest by the name of Chelsea Jean. Hello Chelsea, how are you? Hi Ray, thank you for bringing me on today. I'm excited to chat more. No worries. And just to explain where me and Chelsea met, we met a couple of months ago, uh, a group called the Iconic Group. And I travelled all the way down to Sydney. I actually had no need to be down in that room, but I just felt like I needed to go down. And it was a, a very special group of entrepreneurs. And I met with Chelsea. And the, the funny thing was that both myself and Chelsea are actually from Brisbane. And I discovered some of the amazing work that Chelsea does. And we've since added in part of Chelsea's business into our pro player pathway. So Chelsea, I'll probably get you in the next 60 seconds just to give us a little bit of an intro about you and your business and what you do. Yeah, so Ray, I am a naturopath who specializes in lymphatic health. And I know that that L word, lymphatic, can be a word that not many people understand. But we have 15 litres of lymph in our body that we really don't utilise to its best potential. It's what keeps us, our fluid, moving around our body. It transports our hormones around our body. It's where our immune system lives. So as a naturopath, I believe that our body can do lots of things to heal itself and to keep itself healthy. And let's utilize this lymphatic system um, that we have to do it. So I've been a body worker for, uh, oh, I started when I was 19. So do the sums, I'm 47 now. And just love working on bodies and helping people feel so much better, more energy um, in their day, they're um, being able to think clearer, being able to get the best out of life without the added unnecessary drill, you know, bad things that um, that can happen. Brilliant. So in regards to the lymphatic area, we're going to start with that. And mm. for those guys who are watching us on YouTube, we've got one of these gloves. Can you tell us what the name <laughs> of this glove is? This is my lymphatic <laughs> glove. We have a spiky side. If you feel this side here, yep. nice and spiky on one side. So that is to help the neural, the nerves on the outside of our skin. The other side is this magnetic ball side. And that what we c is what we can use for over top of your clothes and before and after sport on getting the lymphatic system moving to reduce lactic acid awesome so not just for like any mums and dads this actually could benefit elite athletes and, and players who would aspire to be elite athletes definitely definitely yeah our lymphatic system can be blocked from wearing women wearing bras tight underwear from any surgery even just not from breathing deep enough we're not pumping this fluid through our body and you know our blood is only five liters and it has a your heart and it has your lungs our lymphatic system doesn't have that it doesn't have a pump it relies on us to move and to groove and to keep our body working and any type of injury any yep. type of sprain any type of surgery is going to stop this lymph from traveling as it needs to do through the body just like you brush your teeth every day we're going to brush your body and learn how to, to do that in this, this easy sequence. Now, I, I have tried this and it was it was quite interesting, but just for our listeners, so in regards to the spiky side, we utilise that part first and how yes. long are we having to do that for? Yeah, so when before you have a shower, when you're naked, you're going to start with the spiky side and you're going to brush your body. Now, this is the thing. Most people think that you have to start at your toes yep. or start at your wrists. It's not right. You have to start at your chest. If you're starting at your feet or your hands, you're treating your body like it's a tube of toothpaste, squeezing from the outside without unblocking the chest. So what, is Ta what does Tarzan do before he goes and saves James? His chest. <laughs> he beats his chest. What do those got? What do the guys do? The Maori boys when they the Pacific Islanders? Yeah, they do the haka like before they go and play sport. So that's opening up these lymphatic channels, allowing the lymphatic system to, to run th free um, throughout the body. And to, so it will not slow you down as fast. That lactic acid won't be able to build up as fast. Okay, so that's so that's probably why the Kiwis are so good at rugby yes, union. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so we start with the spiky side. Yeah. Now we always start at the chest yeah. and we brush towards our heart okay. first. So always brushing towards your heart. Yeah. Now... The lymphatic system can feel heavy throughout your chest. You might feel like clag glue. It might feel like um, 
a rocky road and ridges throughout the area. Unfortunately, women tend to think that they then need to have biopsies and different things done where it could just be a lack of iodine or it could just be a lumpy lymphatic system. So just by massaging your body and doing some self-care is a great way to move this fluid that gets stuck. So we start in the chest and we brush towards your heart and then your shoulder towards your chest and then your elbow and up and then your arms and up. It's a really simple program to follow once you get it. And when we get to our belly, we go clockwise. Yeah. Now, anybody who has got any um, diarrhea or constipation or things like that, we have to massage with the direction of um, your bowels, so around clockwise. And then in the hips, you start massaging through the hips and then working your way. So the feet is actually the last place. We do, and that's not really well known throughout the world when it comes to dry skin brushing. We okay. have to follow the correct sequence. So talking about for our players and our athletes, we've got a lot of boys and girls in our programs. Is there any age restrictions with this? Is this like something that children should or shouldn't be doing? Or We have a lot of mums who have babies with constipation issues and they use <coughs> the gloves on the baby's belly and start wow. moving moving that through. So, no, there is no age at all. Like, I can remember being young and running around the toilet, like, bent o- running around the table, bent over, like, needing to go to the toilet and having lost lots of, you know, constipation-type issues. So... If we're not getting rid of that waste, yeah. think of your um, your body like a aquarium. Yeah. So in this fish tank, you've got all of the water, you've got the fish, you've got the plant life that all needs to live live in there. If that filter isn't working properly and that water isn't getting cleaned out, the fish isn't going to be healthy. The plant's lives are going to die off quite fast. So the, your lymphatic system is that fluid in that aquarium. So everybody has lots of lots of lymph and depending on your uh, um the how much water you drink depending on what food you put in depending like the air that you breathe or the toxins that are in our environment these days a lot of kids are being born with 300 different um heavy metals and toxins in their body these days they're they're out they're under the pump Children yep. these days are already getting born disadvantaged with their with a toxic load in their lymphatic system. So the more that we can encourage it and keep it moving and detoxing, the better the fish and the plant life and all of our organs can replenish and you know do the job wow. that it needs to do. So drawing it back into football to soccer with yes. our, our players, would this be something that would be useful like a pre-game or more of a post-game or both? Absolutely both. Both. Yes. So before you play, that's why we use the the spiky side. And my son, like he plays basketball. He was playing six games of basketball a week. We use the ball side and we follow the same sequence. And we start at the chest and we're always brushing up. You're always brushing, always t- brushing, always brushing up. So just by doing this two minute sequence before sport, uh, and even when I go to gym and a lot of my athletes, I've got a lot of PTs, they do this. They will tell me that their output, they can lift heavier and they can run faster and their times are getting so much better. So if you're clearing your system first, then when you're exercising and you're moving, all of that flow is already happening. There's nothing there blocking it from, from flowing through. Yeah. Now, if you hurt yourself... Like being a soccer player, like knees, is it knees that can yeah, be... Yeah, knees and ACLs are the big one. Yeah. yeah. So if you fall over, if you, if, you hurt, if you hurt yourself, if you hurt your knee, one of the old things to do would be to ice it, okay? Now, we've done lots of studies in this, and the studies now, all of the new studies, is the last thing you want to do is apply ice to the area because the lymphatic system has to go in and find out what's going on, what's wrong. It has to pick up any damaged tissue in there, blood vessels, what, what has to be removed. So it has to pick that up and remove it. It then has to bring that, the, so the signals, the body gets told, those T cells, those B cells, your immune system gets told what to then to send to the area and how to fix it fast. If we're icing that area, it slows the process down a lot. Please ice if it's broken and if it's in pain, but other than that, let's raise it and let's compress it yeah. and allow the lymphatic system to do its work and you will heal so much faster. So pretty much trust in your body and let it do what it's meant to do. Exactly. And, and recover. 
So in regards to our players, I mean, is this something that we can quite easily access? I mean, what's the cost involved in one of these? Yeah, so you get two gloves because, as we know, two is always better than one. Yeah. You get two gloves in a kit and it takes... 30 seconds to a minute to rub your body like you do a warm-up. It's a really great, easy sequence to add into your warm-up uh, beforehand. And then afterwards, it's just rolling over. So 4250 Aussie is, wow. is the pair of, of gloves. And I've also made a magnesium spray. Now, this magnesium spray is powered with MSM and lots of other botanic botanicals because I am a naturopath yep. as well. So it's got um, frankincense, peppermint, arnica. It will not sting. I promise it won't sting. You won't get any itchiness, but it will reduce pain and the MSM heals at a cellular level. So you can rub the magnesium spray on. And this then is the bottle that we've got this here. One can here. I have a look? Yes. You can rub the magnesium on and then you can roll over. Now, the balls aren't just for pushing the lymph through it feels amazing on any tight areas of your body so you can just press and hold you can trigger point as well um the the magnetic balls i could sit on them as well they're really nice so if you're driving like yeah. to sit on them but it's something that's going to fit in your gym bag yeah uh easy to do there's no excuses really so if if just doing a one minute before and one minute after is going to increase your speed and agility and your body's ability to heal um, and get rid of lactic acid, it's a yeah, no-brainer to me. The big one for us in, in professional football at the top level, the elite level, is the lactic acid builder. Mm. And especially now, you get a lot of high-pressure games that will go into extra time and penalties. And that was one of the big things that they've discovered is that the lactic acid buildup kills mm -hmm. kills players, and you see them on the floor trying to. They've got cramp, yes. they've got stretches. So I mean, you know, for the for the sake of forty two dollars fifty, which is about twenty pounds in English pounds, I mean, if we can be doing this before the game yes. and they're doing it on a daily basis, is that right? Maybe yes. five to ten minutes a day. Yeah. If that reduces lactic acid by five percent, that's mm -hmm. going to be a game changer because. Sometimes the margins in winning these big games is that are going for that extra minute or two and yes. being able to compete at that because they, they are travelling anything up to 14 or 15 kilometres in a game. Mm -hmm. And if they can reduce that lactic acid, that's, uh, that's going to be huge. Guys, we're going to go to a break. And when we come back, we're going to be talking about compression suits mm -hmm. and also intolerance tests. And I'm going to run you through this beautiful test that I've done. So guys, we're going to be back. We'll let you watch our advert and we'll see it in the next couple of minutes. Would you one day like to be a professional football player? Would you like to be part of our Pro Player Pathway? What is the Pro Player Pathway? It's an opportunity for all Australian football players aged between 10 and 23 who want to join us to become the next professional football player. On the Pro Player Pathway, you get to join me and my team free of charge to an event all around Australia. When you join me, we're going to teach you the secrets of football in Europe. And one day, maybe, you could be gracing the Champions League final. Guys, over the next 12 months, we're going to be coming around all the major cities of Australia. And when we come around all the major cities, we're going to be running our free events everywhere we go. So guys, what have you got to lose? Nothing. It's a free event. It's for boys and girls aged 10 to 23. And I'm going to teach you the secrets of becoming a top European football player. Oh, and one final thing. We're going to be giving away 20 scholarships to join me on this programme of a lifetime. Hi everyone, it's Raymond Wood and we are doing our podcast number four. And we're, this is part two of this episode. We've just been speaking with Chelsea Jean on these amazing gloves and reducing things like lactic acid. Now, we're going to actually talk a little bit about compression suits because I was amazed that when I first met you, it was all about the lymphatic system and it was all about just these amazing gloves that we've seen in the iconic group that we're part of. Uh, and then I discovered when I come to your shop, which is over in Brisbane, which is in, is it Capella Bar? Capella Bar. Yeah. And you were shot. I seen all these compression suits hung up mm -hmm. and I was like freaked out. I'm like, this is amazing because... One of the gyms I go to in Brisbane is a state-of-the-art gym. They have restoration zones, ice bath, infrared saunas, and they have compression boots, but mm -hmm. they only have, like, the boots for the feet and the ankles. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I've seen that you guys have got these suits that fit the whole body. Yeah, we do. Uh, so can you tell me a little bit about your background with compression mm -hmm. suits and what you do with them? And 
yes. how you come about to being involved with them. Yeah, so I started using compression around 20 years ago. And what I love it that people are using it for sport, but I want to help people with mobility issues. I want to help the elderly. I want to help people who are stuck um, in bed, maybe pre and post injury as well, and how they can get their body up and moving and, and best working properly. So what we do is from a, a lymphatic point of view is we will always start in the correct order by at the chest first and massaging through the chest and then picking a compression suit to fit a compression area to suit where somebody has a blockage in their body. Now that can be for women if they've had a mastectomy, um, that can be through the chest and we need to use the the arms if they've had lymph nodes removed in the top part if um, people have had any abdominal surgery then we would concentrate on the shorts as well as so many people get really tight in their lower back and the hips and then we would use compression in the in with the shorts and then the lower leg of course with any calf build up any swelling in the legs um, up after surgery it just makes your legs feel so much lighter. And because our body is under so much stress, it is such a great way of working with the parasympathetic nervous system. And this is a thing when it comes to sports people is that you tend to be go, go, go a lot. And stress does put out a lot of cortisol and that just keeps on an inflammatory uh, mode in your body. With the compression system, it is like swaddling a baby. It's like giving that nice womb, I am safe feeling and everything just goes, oh, like I know, did you fall asleep? Yeah, so for, for the listeners who are listening in, I actually went over to Chelsea studio and I got the compression suits on and the first thing I felt was the pressure. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this is going to potentially like, hurt me but then after the first minute I stopped being a wuss <laughs> I realized it was actually doing something and then I felt tingling in the hands and the arms and then I think about 10 minutes later I realized I've fallen asleep yes. yeah <laughs> it was so amazing it brings you down you don't realize how up and hypo you t- you tend to be yeah. um, and then it just brings that woo back into your life so we work with the parasympathetic nervous system but plus we need to re-educate and help that lymph move up and it's not just your legs and this is what I'm passionate about sharing is that your lymphatic system travels all throughout your body and a lot of us get caught up in our hips and our lower back uh, and that lymph can get stuck and that can be a couple of reasons we don't belly breathe we don't move our hips enough um, and also wearing tight undies tight undies can also stop the flow of lymph getting past um, up to the heart where it needs to be wow so just for those who are watching us on our youtube channel we've got Our lovely dummy here, who's ironically called Blue, but it's actually red. (laughs) I won't even ask why we're calling her Blue. But for everyone who can see on the camera, we've got these shorts. And so from a a professional football player's point of view, whether it be a male or a female, is there any way that you would target first with the compression suit? Or would you say the whole part Mm. of the body? Where would you go first? People can be different to their composition. So there's four different body types that people have, um, which means that they can store extra fluid in in different parts. So first of all, I would look at their body shape and their body type to see, okay, where do they seem to hold fluid the most? Secondly, I would look at where, uh, if they've had any previous injuries, Uh, but people tend to know these types of things themselves and go, oh yeah, I'm always have, I'm tight around the hips or I've always have this uh, pool of swelling around my knees or my ankles yeah at the end of the day get really sore so they can sort of choose which which area but the important thing with pneumatic compression is that we start at the bottom and we compress from the feet all the way up or from the knees when we're using the shorts all the way up and we're moving this lactic acid through the body nice and gently because recovery is the big thing in sport these days isn't it it is yeah yeah so if we can make recovery faster then those athletes who want to then go to the gym at midnight or like do all these other things as well, they can keep on pumping their body more because we are removing the acid, we're removing the waste, removing the inflammation and that getting that immune system involved in healing. We, we've just been back to the UK and we had a, a huge football tour and we took 116 with us. It was phenomenal. And while we were there, uh, we went to a few games and it just reminds me that in Europe, it's so full on with the football. So 
my boyhood team, Liverpool, they actually played three competitive games in seven days, mm. which is crazy. And some of those players are covered in 12 to 14 kilometres. Would you say with the compression suits again, similar to the gloves, is this something that you would expect as a daily treatment? Yes. But also, is this more of a, a benefit to do with pre and post or both? Yeah, so I imagine that the players will be training most days as well. So yeah. on an off day, I would just sit, and if they're watching a movie, you can sit in them for two hours okay. and just pump that lymph through, like okay. on a two-hour basis. It's something that you start when you start and you feel the benefits and how much lighter you feel afterwards. It's something that you're not going to go, oh, I'm going to have to hop in compression. It's going to be... <gasps> compression time yeah. yeah it's something that you will be your body will just crave and yeah. and want to do but yes do it beforehand to get everything moving if you don't have if, if you don't have time use the gloves yeah. but if you've got for even just 15 minutes ray beforehand to jump in the compression and get everything moving and open amazing yeah and then afterwards use it as part of your warm down routine yeah amazing and we actually when we were back in the uk we met with quite a few pro clubs and we've obviously got a lot of contacts in the game I met with a, an amazing guy called Mark Palios. Mm -hmm. He used to work with the English FA. He's now the owner and the head honcho at Tramia Rovers Football Club. And I was speaking to him about your gloves and I was speaking to him about the compression suits. And, yeah, hopefully we're going to, if it's all right, would you get some sense across? Absolutely. And, uh, and we'll let some of the pros in the UK test out some of this. And, uh, yeah, it'll be... I think I might have to go and deliver them. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> yes. maybe. Yeah, we, we go back to the UK. I think we've got four trips in the next 12 months coming up. So maybe if we Wonderful. can uh, sneak it in a suitcase yes. and you can, uh, you can come along with us. Now, in regards to the compression suits, just to finish off, anyone who's had a, a serious injury mm -hmm. and they're a few weeks out from there, if they've had surgery or if they've had a really bad injury and they're coming back from, is the benefits around the compression suit post injuries as well or not? Straight or? away. Okay. Straight away. It's a necessity. As soon as you can be in a suit, as soon as... There's probably the stitches are out, if there is any stitches, straight in the compression. The great thing about our CJ and Co Circulate is that you can turn off certain areas and compartments as well. So if there is an, er an area in the knee that we don't want to have too much compression on, we can just turn that one section off, but we would still push from the ankles up and then take it up from the, um, the top of the thigh as well you want to be doing getting the lymphatic system working in your active recovery straight away wow that's that's amazing and it's it sort of blew me away that we go around a lot of the pro clubs and we did see some clubs have compression suits but they only had the bottom part mm. and it was quite interesting when i spoke to some of them as well that they sometimes i think they just purchase them not really sure the benefits of them and mm. don't really not necessarily enforce them on the athletes but if they want to use them they do and don't and i think after this podcast and if we can share this back to mm. all of our family and friends in the football world, it would be good for them to realise the benefits of, of getting access. That's, that's the problem that I have with the commercial suits that are now available. It's like, oh, here you go, just put this on. And people are squeezing their body like they're a prawn. They think, oh, yeah, let's go up to level six because it's the highest. And they're going above their blood pressure level and there's no education about where why why are they pushing it in the first place and where is it all going to go and if all the top is blocked up they're just creating this ma you imagine squeezing a tube of toothpaste with the lid still on how gunky and yuck it's going to get yeah. in the middle well, it's going to pop eventually it's, it's going <laughs> to pop a every out and yeah. yeah so this is where we need some education even though it isn't hard to understand just a little bit of knowledge and to use these devices correctly yeah. um that's my part to play so when for example, you were to sell one of these compression suits, does it come with some sort of like instructions and advice yes. around it? And you obviously just spoke about level six. Like what are the levels? What are the ranges? If you can tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, so there's six different modes on yeah. each of the circulates. Have six different modes starting from a really nice gentle sequential mode and then working up from there. So there is lots of videos on, on those as well. And then there's different pressures too. Wow. So that's the thing is that you can find videos of me talking about each level each mode lots of information you can contact us by email by phone and ask any questions that you like that's fun and you said there's videos obviously was it like on youtube and stuff or where yes. would they find them yes cj and co instagram and youtube yes oh very good very good well mm. we'll share all that back in the uh, in the show notes towards the end guys that's the end of part two and when we come back we've got i'm excited by all of this this is all amazing <laughs> 
but I'm more excited to share this next part all around the intolerance test. So guys, watch our advertisements, listen to them, and we'll be back in a few moments. Hey everyone, we are coming around every major city in Australia over the next 12 months. We have got free objective football testing going on, guys. It's for boys and girls aged 10 all the way through to 18 years of age. The objective testing is quite simple. We'll put you through our six tests and I'll give you your results, physical, technical, and tactical. And also, we're going to choose 16 winners to join us on an all expenses paid trip to Europe in 2024 and also 2025. Guys, what have you got to lose? Nothing. It's free to sign up. You get free objective testing and you'll get a free feedback. And maybe you'll be joining me at the Santiago Bernabeu in 2024 or 25. Hi everyone, it's Raymond Wood and this is the final part of episode four. Now we've had the amazing Chelsea Gym with us. We've spoke about our amazing gloves and the lymphatic system. We've just been speaking about compression suits and this is the one that really excited me the most and I think for the benefits of our, our players and athletes. So one of the things that I've had a problem with personally over the years has been food and drink and choosing and deciding there's so many different advices around it and you should eat this, you should be gluten free, you shouldn't drink this, you should drink that. And we've been looking for our pro player pathway program to add in a full-time nutritionalist and bring that in. But I really questioned it all because I thought we need to make sure, do we actually know what people should be eating? So when I met Chelsea, she told me about this food compatible test. So anyone who's watching on YouTube, we've got this amazing brochure, which we'll share back through our group and we'll put some of the information in the show notes. And one of the big things in Europe, which is getting really popular with two of the biggest pro clubs at the moment is what we call intolerance testing, mm -hmm. which is the same thing. So can you tell us a little bit more about this food compatible test? Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because as a naturopath, I'm not going to do a diet plan for anybody now unless they have done this hair compatibility test as well because it, it's just guessing. Yeah. Everybody's different. Everyone's an individual. What's happening in your gut is completely <coughs> different to what's happening in mine. Saying that we do see some regular foods on the red list of not to include. So it's easy to do. We just cut off a little bit of your hair. It ha only has to be, oh, with yours, it was a little bit hard to find. Yeah. You're like, just Chelsea, just cut it. Um, <laughs> about a half a matchstick of, of hair is what we need in thickness and in length. And we send it off to the lab. And the lab is going to test it to get 600 of the main foods from your town, from your, um, from your city. And what it says is, what not what you're allergic to, but what are the things that when it's going through your body is causing an eruption, is causing your body to swell, is putting some, is spiking, you know, some, some holes through your gut lining? What are the things that when, when it's added up are slowing you down and causing bloating, causing headaches, causing your memory, like brain fog, um, your muscles not to react as fast? It's all of these things that we can now identify and give you an actual list and say, here, we've identified these things out of 600 different foods and household items, remove them for six months, let your body heal the way that it should be, and then let's slowly add them back in. So when it comes up and your list is on with the red, it's not a forever yeah. It's not a forever thing, but they are the main ingredients that are causing the pain in your body. Yeah, it's with our Pro Player Pathway program, it's the world's only niche personalised football development program. Mm. And it's like with anything, when we've looked at it, we said if the fuel going into the car is not right, the car is not going to run effectively. Mm -hmm. And I've really held off on adding in the nutritional elements to the program. And I was so happy when I met you and I seen this because I knew it was like a light bulb moment. It was like the flux capacitor and back to the future. <laughs> I'm like, this is the final piece mm. because we're all about giving our players the best opportunity, giving them those one percenters. But I think for me, I mean, I come in to your studio. We did struggle to find the hair because anyone who's watching on YouTube, I don't have much hair. <laughs> and we had to cut away at leg hair and we went everywhere yes, to get we hair. did. And yeah, I, I got it sent off. I was in the UK and I, I messaged Chelsea to say, where are my results? I haven't seen them. And then, yeah, they had been sent, but I think they were in a junk folder somewhere. Mm. Now, the big thing for me, we, we got mm. the hair sample. It got sent off. 
we get a list that comes back and I've got some of my results in front of me and it's quite interesting to talk about it. So we'll talk about the blacklist. So mm -hmm. that's all the foods in black that's listed on this and they're all foods that agree with me and yes. you don't get a response. So I was quite pleased that all of the green vegetables were on there. <laughs> I was happy with that. I was happy with that too. So, but a really interesting one for me that come back red. So when we talk about the red list was corn. Mm. And that was like, when I was looking at other vegetables, it was the only other vegetable. But then I realised how much corn I actually have in my diet. Because like, I'm crazy with these English style snacks called Monster Munch, which are made with corn. Oh, there you go. I also love like corn to tears. Mm -hmm. I love popcorn. Okay. <laughs> so I realised that actually most of my diet most was pretty much made up of corn. <laughs> and that's the only thing that showed up. Yeah. And I yeah. mean, being English... We love. We call it a bacon butty or mm -hmm. a, ba a bacon toasted sandwich. Bacon's gone for me. Uh, duck, emu. I've never ate emu before, so that's <laughs> not a disappointment. And ham and pork, which mm. was was really really interesting. One of the things that going back to the pro player pathway, we try and make it as personal as possible. This is the beauty of this: is that it's personalised to every individual. We're very pleased to announce for everyone who's on our pro player pathway, they're going to get this test. We've got just slightly under 100 players on our program at the moment. Uh, we're going to be in the US next year, mm -hmm. and we've got some exciting news around that in the next month or two. And we're going to look to have about a 1,000 players in our program in the next 12 months. So the fact that we can offer this, and what was really interesting to me was there's so many nutritionalists in pro clubs in the UK and in Europe, but they don't actually look at it from this level. They're not actually... No looking at personalised, and, and this is what's, what's blown me away. And They'll tell you to have fat, a protein, a carbohydrate at each meal and those types of things, and then say, oh, well, maybe reduce the gluten, you know, go with lactose-free milk. But at least now with this list, you've got the actual brand that you can have. It's yeah. not just a guessing game. So you take that to the shops and you're like, okay, this is what I can have and this is what I need to remove. You had lots of meat come up. Mainly, We get 80% of results come back that say no chicken. Yeah. So you're, you're okay with chicken. I'm you're okay an with chicken. And I, yes. I must admit, I love chicken. Yes. One of the things that really did disappoint me was eggs because I, I love eggs. And I think you get this thing about eggs and protein. Mm -hmm. And when you're in the gym and you're trying to, you know, get a bit stronger and bigger. But to be honest, I've removed eggs. I've removed all the red foods. And I, I must admit, like... I felt like I've lost 15 kilos. Yeah. I haven't, but just the way I feel, I'm fitting to clothes as well. Mm -hmm. I don't, I stopped drinking alcohol about two years ago. Uh, and just this whole, I still had a little bit of cloudiness some mornings, but I haven't had that for two weeks. And it's, it's really blown me away mm -hmm. just by removing. Now, one thing I do want to talk on, I'm going to talk about chocolate. You this had a lot of chocolate show up, didn't you? I've got the worst sweet tooth ever. You, I could tell by your test results. Now, what was really interesting for me, and I think this is all around education and back to athlete and back to the parents. So for any boys and girls who are on our programs, on the elite program, on the pro player pathway with us, one that come up was chocolate and Cadbury's. Mm. But one that didn't was lint chocolate. Mm. So I went on a little bit of a rabbit hole. And yes. I explored, and it was so interesting to discover that all the different things are added into Cadbury's chocolate. And then I looked at Lindt chocolate, and it was made up of two ingredients. It was simple. It was mm -hmm. cocoa and a little bit of butter. Mm. And it made me realise that once you started looking, it actually made sense because of the amount of... There was a lot of letters and a lot of numbers in Cadbury's chocolate, mm -hmm. and it was really interesting just to see some of their ingredients, and it sort of made sense why it yeah. would be intolerant to me. So... When we talk about these red lists, so you said that we don't get rid of these forever. Is that right? No, Help. that's right. So after about six months when you will see um, – so when you do your test, remember I ask you what symptoms and what things are going on with your body and you get to then say, oh, that's improved, that's improved, that's improved. You'll notice a major improvement in everything. After six months, you can start to add those things back into your diet slowly or we can retest. Okay. And when we retest, a lot of the red ones will jump back to black and you'll be fine. But then it will add the next layer in, the ones that might have been sitting at that 58 59% bef not turning red will jump in and say, okay, well, you're now ready to go to take your health to the next level again. 
this red list is the first list that will get you started and you'll notice a big difference. But then the next lot will go, okay, well, he wants to be healthier again and he's going to step it up. Yeah, no, that's... In regards to me, I think, like, one I've always known as milk. If I have any form of milk, within five minutes, I'm done for the day. I'm in mm. the bathroom, and it's, yeah, yeah, it's not nice. So I wasn't shocked to find anything from a cow I can't have. Mm -hmm. Disappointed I can't eat cheese. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think one of the cheeses I can have, which I think wasn't on there, which really pleased. Which so goat's cheese, maybe? Is yeah. goat's cheese on there that you can have? Yeah, so there were, I think there was goat's cheese, and there was another type of cheese, but... Also, like, I've always secretly known bread as well. I've always had mm -hmm. issues in the past feel bloated and, like, it pretty much said white and homemeal breads were a no-go. Yeah. Uh, would it be okay with all these red foods and drinks and stuff just to completely remove them forever? Because I'll be honest with you, the way I feel, I don't <laughs> ever want to touch them again. <laughs> yeah, when I retested, uh, chicken took 18 months to be me to be added back to my list. And then are you fine eating chicken now all the time or have you... F I will, know. So I will. we might have chicken once a fortnight, something like that. Yeah. But I will just, if we're out for a dinner and you get a drop plate of chicken every second one, then I'm, I, I'm okay to eat it. I'm not going to react. Yeah. But when I first took it out of my diet, I went to barley and I thought, oh, well, barley chicken's different to normal chicken. I'll eat it. My... Um, Barley belly happened just that Straight day away. from the chicken. Uh, another time my lips swelled up really, really bad from eating the food. So when you read your results, your brain knows that you've been given an answer to feel healthier. Yeah. When you go against that, it will show you, you will get diarrhea, yeah. you will get a cough, you will get a runny nose, you will get puffy lips. Like there will be a reaction because this is all about connecting with our body and learning from the small little subtle signs instead of waiting for a big whack in the head yeah. before you make a change. So again, it's the it's the one percenters and it's, it's quite an interesting one I've got. Uh, someone we grew up with, one of the family friends, mm -hmm. and his name's Stephen Schumacher, and he used to play for Everton, he used to play for England, and he's now the head coach of Plymouth Argyle, who compete in the Championship, which is just below the Premier League. And Stephen had a really interesting one. He was what they were called the ghost, and he would just literally midway in the game, he'd run off a pitch to go to the bathroom and go to the mm -hmm. toilet. And I'm, I just think back to him and those couple of episodes where he had to go to the toilet mm -hmm. mid-game. Obviously, I've gone through a lot of stomach issues over the years and a lot of food issues, but drawing it back into the athletes, I went down, a, again, a bit of a rabbit hole and doing some research, and we actually discovered that if you get these intolerance tests done and these food-compatible lists done, there was a bit of research out there, and it was around 35 to 40% it reduces inflammation in the body. Yes. It was then linked into injuries, and one of the big injuries in football is the uh, UCL injury and see an ACL injury and see a knee, sorry. Mm. And also all, all around calf tears and micro tears, which become big tears and strains. Mm. So from that point of view, I mean, the benefits for yeah. this is... Well, if your body doesn't have to worry about digestion and the... The, the mess that you're making in your tummy, if it doesn't have to worry about that, it can then do the extra work that it needs to around the rest of the body, can't it? So it's going to get there faster and help repair. Yeah, and it's so funny that like we we spoke about, you know, the gloves and the lymphatic system and the compression boots as well. But it then actually then went on and spoke about recovery mm. because obviously if your body's not worrying about digestive system, mm. then that was it was really, really interesting. And, and, and another one that led me down that rabbit hole there's a, a guy in the US called Jesse Itzler, mm -hmm. and he's a very successful entrepreneur. And he actually speaks about all he eats be before noon as fruit, and that's mm -hmm. all he eats. And, and the reasons behind it was quite simple, because fruits are very easy on a digestive system. And he just said, I've always felt like in life I get more out of my day if I only start it with fruit. And he doesn't eat anything other than fruit before lunchtime. Mm -hmm. And it was quite interesting that, yeah, when we went through that test. So I would say fruit and veggies. Yeah. So, yeah, adding your salaries to that as, as well. So, yeah, fruit and veggies beforehand. So going back to the test, mm -hmm. is this, again only for adults or can this be for children and definitely for children so new mothers can mix their hair with a newborn baby's hair and then they know what to eat when they're breastfeeding wow so we go right back to the start with with babies and then afterwards you can do children's like a lot of kids uh, have skin conditions have acne have pimples those types of things eczema eczema all comes back to gut health yeah anything that is showing up on the outside of the skin is what's going on in the tummy 
It's yeah. just an indication. So if we can get the tummy better by reducing the inflammation, by choosing the proper foods for, for our kids, and then a supplement. So a supplements, Ray, is also so important. We cannot get the nutri- nutrients that we need from our foods anymore. Those days are gone. So kids also will need magnesium. Kids will also need zinc. Like there's lots of other supplements that collagen and things that kids will, vitamin C will need as well. Essential fatty acids are super important too. But from a a point of view of kids growing up, yes, definitely find out early because they're not going to come and say to you, oh, I've got, I've had diarrhea for the last three months. You know, you, you, if you can find out what foods, I have clients come in and they'll bring their, their kid in and we'll talk about it. And then I'll say, look, this is going to help make changes in this, this and this and this. They actually do it. The kids that we talk to and they find the list and they will then be the parent and say, oh, no, I can't have that. And they learn themselves and they feel so much better that they will, will help with their diet. Get your kids involved with their diet and their eating f- as early as you can. Getting them to eat healthy food, getting them to check the labels, look at all of those foods that end in OSE that we can't s- pronounce or spell. Yeah. Get them having a look and involved in their diet early and then we're healing their belly all the way through. So when they become adults they won't have this issue. Yeah, I, I just think even like bigger terms as well, just the strain it can save on uh, the medical system in Australia, mm-hmm. uh, Medicare, but also like even going back into Europe, the UK, like the NHS, like the, the savings that it could make Massive. in the medical world is, is huge. I mean, we work with players, anything age roughly from five or six all the way through to 23. We're, uh, we're pleased to announce that we are going to introduce the food compatible mm. test into the pro player pathway program so we already know we've got the world's best development program in developing football players and we now know how to fuel the car mm-hmm. and how to get the right food into there so definitely no issues for a five six seven eight year old all the way up to 23 year, 23 years of age so to do this no test. problem at all i it showed it to my two daughters who were 15 and nine and it was really funny i think because it's so visual they see the black they see mm-hmm. the red and they're really excited because they want to get it done. And I said, yeah, we'll make it happen. We'll get it done for mm-hmm. you. And, like, they're already discussing last night in bed, oh, I hope Monster Munch aren't on there, <laughs> and I hope this isn't on there. And it was they like, get involved, and that's yeah. what I was saying. They, they really want to know for them what works for their own body. Yeah. Mm. It was really interesting. We did speak to one pro club back in the UK, and they said they looked at this about seven or eight years ago, mm-hmm. and the costs were exponential. It was like yeah. in the region of like five thousand pounds to get the test done. Yeah, but obviously, I take it now like costs have come down with the test, and yes. we're gonna we're gonna add it into the program. So, what was really interesting for any of our listeners who are outside of Australia? Mm-hmm. Finally, I think to finish on the list of foods that we get. And also, it also includes drinks on there. But you you spoke about to me before we got on the podcast that it actually specifies the city you're in. And does that mean if you're in England, we mm-hmm. don't have Vegemite, but we mm-hmm. have Marmite? Yes. Does it list English foods? Definitely. It, it, does? w- it doesn't matter where you're from, whether it's um, New Zealand or US, UK. There's, I think, 26 different countries that we test. Wow, because that's really important for us because on our Pro Player Pathway program, we discover the players, whether they be in Australia or the US, mm-hmm. is our two biggest markets that we work in. We then send them for guaranteed trials to the UK and to Europe, but also we guarantee them scholarships. Mm-hmm. So a lot of them will end up in Europe and the UK, and I think it's really prevalent for us that we can then follow on this test mm-hmm. and maybe get tested again in the UK so they get tested against British foods, as an example. That'd be wonderful. Yeah, mm-hmm. so that's, that's really good. So what we might do is we might try and set up one or two of mm. our uh, clubs that we work with in the UK, and maybe see if we can get one or two pro players in the UK to get tested, if you're happy to help us Absolutely, with that. Absolutely, yes. And, uh, I might have a chat with Mark and the guys at Tramia Rovers and see if we mm. can get a few of the pros uh, to set up. Now, one final thing before we finish off. Mm-hmm. This has been an amazing podcast. I'm so excited to get this one out to everyone. But what was really interesting for me, and I just want to talk a little bit about it, but we spoke about food and drinks, but then what was really interesting it says things like toothpaste, mm-hmm. natural home products, and then petrochemicals. Like, it was really interesting. Like, my two daughters are like, Dad, do you drink engine oil? And I'm like, no. Why? And he said, well, 
engine oils come up red. Mm. So can you explain a little bit about the, the concerns with that? Yeah, so when it comes to household items, Colgate toothpaste comes up. Was it Colgate toothpaste? Steradent. You had Steradent. Yeah. So normally about 90% of the time Colgate toothpaste comes up. Wow. And like I had a, got a plumber friend and he's like, Chels, when I stopped using Colgate, I now sleep through the night. Just to changing his toothpaste. These are the things that we, you would never put to toothpaste, yeah. like changing. Changing the sheets on your bed, it'll say whether you can have linen or cotton or bamboo. And because you sleep with yeah. that, you're breathing that in all of the time. I think the, the interesting one for me was uh, I think it was feathered pillows or any sort of feathers. And yes. that was one thing, especially in the UK, because it's so cold there, everyone's obsessed with feathered mm -hmm. duvet covers, feathered pillows. And I always had them. But it was really interesting. For my younger years, I had a lot of issues with asthma. And I yes. wonder if that was linked. Yes. Yeah. So all of those household items are important as well. Um, and then wash what you wash your body with deodorants yeah. um, that you use as well. When it comes to petrol and, like the, and the chemicals, it could be if your parents worked in on cars or um, whether they were farmers and then you're born with an intolerance to, to those So when we talk about like oils and stuff and that, is that like actually physically touching the oil or even just breathing in the fumes from it? So or? just be aware to, when it comes to household and items and things, try to stay away from them. You don't have to ban them out of your life like the food. It's like the second degree being aware of them. Of so, them. yeah, so don't, if you've got open tins, like if you all have tins like in your garage, maybe move them out to a shed. So those fumes aren't in your in your area. Yeah. Yeah. So just be aware. No, that that's amazing. I think we're gonna we're gonna wrap it up there. But just if anyone wants to reach out to you, Chelsea, mm -hmm. have you got like a website or how do people reach out to you? Yeah, I think you can just Google me, Chelsea with a Y, yeah. different to the football. You know, C H E L S E Y, Chelsea Jean, and yeah. you'll find me on YouTube, on Facebook, on Instagram, Chelsea Jean Lymphatics. Amazing. And we'll also share it in the show notes as well at the mm -hmm. bottom. We'll put your links in and website and your social media handle. And anyone who's interested in the, the gloves, the compression boots, also around the intolerance test, guys, we'll share all that information to you. And yeah, we're so excited to get all this. I think we're definitely going to get the gloves going for our players and, and also the intolerance test. So it's a, a big thank you for joining us today. And uh, I reckon we're going to get you to come on again. So would you join us again in the near future? Yeah, absolutely, Ray. Thank you so much for taking care of your people, hey. Yeah, like, no. it's, it's beautiful. Well done. Yeah, no, thank you. We're looking forward to adding some of this into our pro player pathway. So, guys, a big thank you for joining us on episode number four. And we're very excited with our next episode that we're going to be bringing up. We're going to be going back live to the UK to a pro club. And we've got some exciting news to follow on that. Enjoy your week, guys. Peace out.